Good morning. Thank you so much for your invitation to be here and your warm welcome. It is such a joy to my heart to be with you all this morning. Have you ever had words that you thought you knew what they meant move on you and slip out of the way? I was raised in the United Church of Christ in a church in Northern California where the pastor talked about his role of equipping the saints. And he said, my job in this church is to be an enabler. <laughs> the, there's been a movement, yeah? In the meaning of that term, it made sense then, it's kind of not the one we want to use now so much. Words change meaning. Margie mentioned that I have been serving at Church of the Crossroads for the past four years, and as I try to explain to people who ask what's happening with me now, sometimes I say, I'm in transition. <laughs> Another word that is uh, in motion at the moment, fine. It's just we have to be cautious who's listening, making sure we make sense to the folk to whom we are speaking. But that goes to the question of change. I invite you to think about yourself. This is not a raise your hands or talk back kind of moment. This is internal work. Think about yourself. Think about how you feel about change. When financial advisors talk to folk who are thinking about their long-term finances. They try to assess if you are risk-averse or risk-attracted, yeah? So are you change-averse or change-attracted? Maybe a little bit of both depending on the context, right? We all like to think that we are um, flexible. I am someone who looks to texts for wisdom. This is not the only text, uh, by a long shot. <clears throat> but this is a primary text for me. And uh, this is the Bible, in case... <laughs> One of the things that I've had to deal with, as many of us do with any kind of text or tradition, is figure out what our approach is to the authority of the messages that come our way. What is our approach to the authority? And although I'm a, you know, you cut me and I bleed UCC, I really am a United Church of Christ person. Nonetheless, the Methodists are the ones that I think have the best grasp on how to approach um, sort of the, the, the multiple messages of um, faith. So they say you have to look at scriptures or the texts, the wisdom texts of your tradition. Then you also have to look at the traditions, what has come down through the ages. But then you also have to use your experience. Your experience counts, especially in revelation of the divine. And reason. Do not check your gray matter at the door. Bring all of who you are to the moments of your life, including those that are about transcendence and about the internal journey. When I think about church life, congregational life, in particular, a congregation that is in transition, if you will, that is in the midst of change, as this congregation has been, I think about what wisdom comes from the um, Interim Ministry Network. Have you heard of the Interim Ministry Network? There's a group of folk from all kinds of denominations, all kinds of religious groups, that focus on the special needs, the special circumstances of a congregation that is between settled pastors. Yeah? Not quite there, not done with what came before, this in-between time, the interim time, because there are important tasks for a congregation to do, to engage in, to till the soil, 
and to take to heart the learnings in order to be ready for whatever is next on the journey. So the interim ministry network talks about five developmental tasks. Now the, the term is really dry. <laughs> I'll try to liven it up a little bit. But there are five things that a congregation needs to be about in this in-between time. One is looking at the history, the context, the context that was and the context that is now, how the congregation has been shaped and chosen for itself. Secondly, discovering vision and mission, defining, redefining that sense of purpose, that what, what, what are we about? Yeah, what have we been about? What did we say? What are we about now and what are we to be about? Third, leadership. There's always leadership change, yeah? But particularly in the in-between time, folk set down some of the leadership they've been taking and other folk step up. There is a change often more intentional during the in-between time, the interim time. Also, fourth, connections. Connections with others in the community, other folk of faith, but also, in particular, connections with other folk in your network, right? In this case, in the unity community worldwide. And finally, that future piece, the very specific preparation for the arrival of a new pastor. Because that needs to be done intentionally. We've all run into change in our life, in particular grief, that arc in our lives. And if you don't take time to deal with it, it's likely to interfere with whatever's next. You know, the Kubler-Ross yeah, arc, stages, not linear, but stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Where you might be and where you might be on that cycle uh, might differ one from the other. And being gracious with each other when one is angry and the other one is bargaining and you're accepting but you're in denial and we're all together that becomes really crucial, especially in this kind of in-between time. In, in the text, in the book of Acts, there's a story about Paul going to Corinth. And Paul goes to Corinth, and he stays in Corinth for a year and a half. And he teaches, and he... Um, supports himself by making tents. If you've ever heard tent making ministry, it comes from Paul. He like sewed tents in order to you know, have income. He was there for a year and a half. He was there for a piece of time. Just like, for example, uh, Nicholas Griffin, Dr. Nicholas Griffin was here in your midst for a time, for a time. And I imagine there is some grief still over his departing. There's probably grief on a number of levels over the departures that have happened from this platform. Think for a moment about the first time you came to worship here. Who was standing up here? I've been to worship here once before. I got my kukui nut lay. And it was uh, Saint Nick, <clears throat> as I was told to address him. Nicholas, it helped me remember his name. Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas was up here on the platform. So for me, other than my beloved um, companion on the faith journey, Margie, the, with whom I've had the opportunity to work in community, in terms of this space, in my eyes, Nicholas is the one who stands up here. So think for yourself. Who is inside your eyes when you think of this place? 
Who was here when you came and stayed, found home, were touched, moved, opened, healed? If that's what leadership from this platform looks like inside of you, it will be very difficult for you to move into what's next because a new leader is coming. You all are part of the leading of the spirit here, but a new person will stand here. And in order for you to be ready, you, and you, and you, not just you collectively, but you yourself, in your heart, on your own journey. You need to be real inside about what you got from those who stood here in the past. What do you carry forward with you that is animating and life-giving? And if you can be really honest, what characteristics of those who have stood here are you happy enough to set down and leave in the past so that the opening that is before this community might have your whole heart, your whole being, the new creation, the new vision that is coming that is right before your eyes. A little further on in that text, actually in one of the letters to the people in Corinth, Paul says, it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Do we not all belong to the Christ spirit? I have just spent two months hanging around about 35 men who were singing Disney songs. <laughs> and if you have further questions, please see Don. <laughs> Of those songs, one of them just got a hold of me. It might have a hold of you in the earworm kind of way as well. Let It Go from Frozen. How many of you have seen Frozen, know the song, Let It Go? All right. How many of you have seen Frozen multiple times? Okay, that's like the same set. <laughs> awesome. The song Let It Go, in the context of the story of Frozen, is a moment of rejection, right? She rejects that which came before, the, the expectations, the role, the, the everything. She says, I'm going to go somewhere new and embraces that. So it's a rejection and an embrace. Don't cut this too fine, right? Because there's like things to reject and things to accept. She makes a choice, takes the choice what to let go of, let it go, and what to hang on to going forward. Likewise, Maleficent. How many of you have seen Maleficent? All right, how many of you have seen Maleficent multiple times? All right, they own it. There's transformation. There is a movie that holds transformation, the heart stuck in one spot and in the face of love transformed. Look around the room. This is a command form. Look around the room. <laughs> in the midst of this change, in the midst of the change averse, change embracing, change seeking, in the midst of the transformation that you all are in, you have each other. You all will be in different places, 
but you will be together. Look to each other. That's the journey in community. Thanks be to God for that. <laughs>